What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the Chance Bishop Show for episode 49 of our MLB The Show 22, Road to the Show featuring Chance Bishop. And here we go, starting off with some people who are retiring from the league right now, 2029, end of 2029, I should say. Nick Castellanos went back to the Reds, that's good for him. Quinn retires. Let's see, any other big names? Mikel Franco, former Philly right there. Jorge Alfaro, former Philly. Jose Altuve retires. Anderson Alvarez, Tyler Bidet. Xander Bogart, Greg Bird. Ty Buttry, Javi Baez. A lot of players actually retiring. Garrett Cole's gone. Let's see, any Paul DeJong, Edwin Diaz. Uh, Mary Garrett, Nico Goodrum, Kevin, uh, Kendall Graveman, Chad Green, Cole Irvin. And I'm like, Corey Knable? I'm, I'm just going through this list like, wow, that's a lot of players. Frankie Montas, Joe Musgrove, Kevin Newman. Okay, okay, we're getting Edward Rodri Eduardo Rodriguez. You have Joe Ross. Uh, let's see, anyone else? Any other okay names? Frambler Valdez, Emmanuel Valdez, uh, Luke Williams, and Mike Zanino. Really? Jose Altuve retired? Unless that's a different Jose Altuve. It's like an autogen Jose Altuve, which there's a good chance it is. Because there's no way, like, Astros Jose Altuve doesn't make the Hall of Fame. Just saying. But we're in the offseason now, looking on some offers. The Mariners offer us 10 years, 342. Miami's offer us 9 years, 294. The Dimebacks are offering us 9 years, 309. The Dimebacks, 93 win team. Uh, Braves are offering us 10 for 334. Reds are offering us 11 at 385. Diamondbacks come back with 315. Let's see. I mean, we're getting a lot of big offers. 385, though, from the Reds. I didn't know they had that much money to offer. The Mariners were like, hey, you want a qualifying offer for one year, 21.1 million? And as much as I appreciate it, no, I'm not going to accept that contract offer uh, there, Mr. Uh, Mr. Reds. Braves come back, 334. I mean, these are the same. Angels up there at 385. The Angels are not good at offering contracts. I'm sorry. Rockies at 10, 350. Do they still have Chris Bryant? Is Chris Bryant still under contract? I, I doubt it, but I'm pretty sure that the Rockies are just, they're not in a position to be offering someone a $350 million. The same way the Reds are still offering, are in a position to offer someone $385 million. Giants come at 10 for 350. So a lot of teams gone for 10 years, 35 a year. I mean, I'm still surprised the Reds are going at 38.5 a year for AAV. I mean, Chance Bishop, he's just at this point, he's just letting the offers come in like, hey, let's let these let these get these high AAVs come in. And then he gets a call from his, from his uh, agent and be like, hey, Scott Boris here. Who do you want to talk to? Who do you want to directly talk to? Like, what? team you want to go through and when you really cycle through it what team could use a second baseman what team could come out here and use chance bishop services the roles are interesting right there you know the blue jays are interesting the padres are interesting team right here but they have jazz chisholm do i want to replace jazz chisholm though be be, be manny tatis chance and a first baseman the Dodgers, they got Michael Bush. I'm liking, I'm liking the Padres right now. The Padres are a fun, are a fun team to look into. Got the Giants, the Orioles, Red Sox maybe, Yankees, Rays, Blue Jays. I don't know, man. There's a lot of good teams you can go through, and each of them have their perk. Especially look at these overalls. I guess not the overalls, their win loss records. But I mean, hey, Miami, South Beach. Join up with Ozzy Albies, toss one of them at shortstop, you know, kick out Albies to shortstop maybe, and then you play chance at second base, toss Albies into the DH role, but that's like a 69 win team, and it's like, do you want to go to a losing team while you have like a team at the Padres who have 96 wins, and then it's like, alright, where are you going to put Jazz at, and you know, make Jazz like your, your DH, make him like a rotational piece, something like that. I mean, it's... It's a, it's a lot of questions you got to ask here right now. It's like, what team is best suited to pull off sustainable victory or just have a young core of players that is ready to be built around and just implant like a 
a veteran, a high caliber veteran, that you know, just gonna get offered a lot of money. Being hey man, we're gonna give you all this money, and just feel like all you gotta do is say hey, here you go. I mean, look at Marlon, seventh in power. That's about it. Seventh in power. They're last in last in contact. Twenty sixth. Bishop's gonna add to that though, as we're going down to Miami, at least for spring training wise. The Grapefruit League of Baseball. The Ono Marlins, Chance Bishop, going to sit up in this Miami, this teal right here. Looks like the Alzi Albies, they got Logan Ohape. I mean, it's a good mix of people right there. Grayson Rodriguez is a Met. First at bat for Chance, and that's going to be a fly out to deep center field. Some fans probably thought he got a hold of that one in his first ever appearance as a Marlin. Remember, these aren't really uh, debuts as Marlins, this is just appearances. You know, he's playing the field right now. There you go, Chance. Good old double play situation right there. He like to show the fans, hey, if you if you give me this contract, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get it done. Base knock right there, especially for a team that doesn't have great contact. You know, they can really use a guy a good contact guy like Chance Bishop. We're gonna hit easily three three ten minimum, three twenty five, three thirty, three forty. You know, they, they need guys like this. You know, Miami holds on to win it. A big seventh inning. They hold on to win, you know, this little exhibition game. Now, the Cardinals. Cardinals, you know, they're an option for this for Chance Bishop to go to. But does he want to play in St. Louis? That's the real question. Does he want to play in St. Louis? And it's just going to come down to that. Like, who does he want to, does Chance want to play in St. Louis? Or does he want to... You know, be the face somewhere else in a team that doesn't really have many big faces of the franchise. You know, Mi Miami, you think Mr. Marlin, you know, the owner trades Mr. Marlin like a week after, you know, like a season ends and they win a World Series twice and they gut the team both times. It's it's hard to be the face of the Marlins organization. I mean, they have, you think of like notable Marlins, it's like Hanley Ramirez and they traded him away. You think of, like, uh, who's even other Marlins? Like, Gary Sheffield they had at one point, I'm pretty sure, right? They had Gary Sheffield. Traded him. They had Mike Piazza for a day. Traded Mike Piazza to the Mets. They had a bunch of players. Like a bunch of, like, players. It's like, why would you trade all these players? Just because they're cheap? I mean, that's that's the main reason. That's what it comes down to is that they're cheap, and they got rid of all their good players. You know, one thing Chance Bishop also adds here is speed. You know, just taking second base. I mean, it's actually a no decision right there. No no throw. So it's like a no contest kind of throw right there. So it's not an actual stolen base. Now going for third right now. He's still third base, two standing. So he just walked from first to third. Get, didn't get a single throw. We still lose the seven to two because of a big uh, eighth inning from this team now Yuri Perez okay 33 starts he's 9 and 13 last season 386 ERA so it's a very manageable ERA so he has promised just a bad offense it could be like a thing where it's like Jacob deGrom where deGrom would have like a one ERA but he'd have like eight losses and two wins because the Mets would score negative runs whenever he pitched if they scored two runs that he'd get the win but if they average like one and a half runs a contest whenever De uh, DeGrom pitches, which, I don't know, man, that could possibly be something like that, or just the offense isn't there to assist Perez, opposed to, hey, this is Perez's fault. That's just my, that's my understanding of what could possibly be happening right now, but I don't know. I mean, we're taking on Sean Reed Foley again. Second time this episode we've taken on Sean Reed Foley. You know, he's still with the Mets. He's like like seeing players stick around with some teams. Sean Gunther back out there. Didn't Gunther get the win in the first episode, the first game of of the of this spring training, I guess tryout kind of area? Didn't that happen? But there you go, Chance Bishop. Marlins get the win right now. It's so uh, Gunther has uh, two saves in the season. Cease get the loss. I mean, jeez, Grayson Rodriguez and Dylan Cease. We have Jose Barrios who, in the spring so far, has an inning pitched. It hit a loud in a strikeout. Okay, Jose, let's see what you still got in the tank. You're older. You're not like your mid-30s, like mid, like back-end mid-30s. 
So, I mean, I think he's been with Marlins now for a couple seasons, but I guess he's, they're trying, the Miami's trying to reach out to their um, Hispanic community, which I understood why they don't do that more. Like, go ahead for the Hispanic community, Marlins. Like, you have a huge population in Miami that, you know, Cuba, um, uh, Puerto Rico, you know, uh, Haiti, all of these uh, Caribbean islands, you know, all the um, the Hispanic population down there. You know, re reach into that more opposed to try and go for, like, Mark Burley's or Jose Reyes, players like those. You know, go... You know, go for the like the homegrown players, like the the people from Florida, the you know people to bring actual you know fan favorite players who are gonna actually bring people to the stadium to actually come watch play. That's just my opinion on it, honestly. But who knows? I just don't think the Marlins know what they're doing down there. And I mean, if they bring Chance Bishop in, I mean, he's not from Florida. He's kind of like the opposite of what, literally what I just said. Don't go after the Mark Burleys. Go after like. Uh, the foreign players that can bring in uh, the market to your to the population of you know Miami. And it's like oh yeah, Chance Bishop, right? He's he's from New Jersey. He's he's from Florida or uh, from Puerto Rico or or Haiti or Cuba or the Dominican Republic. He's he's from there, right? That makes sense. Yeah, now that entirely entirely went to left field. What I just said. Don't don't listen to me. Actually, I'm actually awful at commentating sports games. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just rambling and hope it makes sense when I hit the stop button right there. That's that's the biggest deal, honestly. It's like, hey, let's see what we could get done right now. Let's see if we can just try and get this, get this over with and not make a fool of myself. But as we wrap this episode up, as we're coming to the end of it, we still need to talk about contracts here with the Miami Martins. What are we going to do here? How long are we going to be in South Beach? How long are we going to be playing in in these uniforms? And I think the real question comes down to, we're going to pull out the LeBron thing, where LeBron's here for a couple seasons. He's like, we're not going to win one or two or three. We're going to win, like, 28 championships. Are we going to do that? I think we're going to do that short term, at least. Three years, $63 million and $63 million, $30,000. I think that's a good feat right there. That's a good feat right there. You know, 21 a year. AAV, not bad AAV at all for Chance Bishop, and I think even on South Beach, it, it, it stirs up interest, you know, and and they're going to agree with it. Yeah, we've accepted it. As we wrap this episode, we'll be at Miami, Miami, uh, Miami Marlins. 